Hello everybody, welcome to Guidance Education channel. We will see the topic that is discussed in this video. We are starting a new chapter in class 11 chemistry, that is plus one chemistry. Classification of elements and periodicity of properties. In this video, we will see the early attempts of classification of elements. We will do Doberaner's triad, Telluric screw, Newland's law of octaves, and Lothar Mayer arrangement. Please watch the video completely so that you get all points cleared. And if you think the video is useful, do like the video, share the video with your friends, and also leave your feedbacks as comments in the comment box below. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, do subscribe it now and support me. And also, press the bell button and all button for notification of more videos like this. Thank you very much. Come, let us start the topics one by one. Something, this chapter is very tough. But actually, this is not tough, provided you understand it thoroughly well. Understanding this chapter is very important. That is, understanding the content of this chapter is very important to make the study of chemistry, say, at any level quite easy because this chapter tells you how by knowing the properties of one element belonging to a group you can predict the properties of other elements belonging to that group so this chapter is really meant to help those who want to study chemistry in detail i will be discussing all the topics in separate videos and all those topics will be included under the same playlist. So you can choose the playlist and watch all the videos in the correct sequence. What is the meaning of classification? That is grouping elements. What is the meaning of periodicity of properties? Properties of elements repeating at regular intervals when they are arranged in a particular order. By the way, before we really go into the details of classification and periodicity of properties of elements, we will first understand what is the significance of classification of elements. That is, what is the need for classification of elements. While classifying elements, elements are grouped into similar groups. So, what does it mean? The number of elements is really big. Initially, that is, in 1800, about 31 elements were known. Later on, by 1865, about 63 elements were known. By now, about 114 and more elements are known. Of course, a few of the recently discovered elements are man-made, not natural. In future, we may expect that more such artificial elements may be found out. That is, man might synthesize or create elements synthetically. As back as 1800s itself, when new and new elements were discovered, scientists understood that studying these elements and their compounds individually will be very, very difficult. So, they thought of finding out some method by which or following some criteria by which these elements can be grouped based on their similarities so that the study of these elements will be easier. We are now following the modern periodic table which is otherwise called long form of periodic table introduced by Mosley. This has now simplified the study of elements and their compounds very much. But before we go into the details of modern periodic table, we will first start with Discussion of a few earlier attempts made by scientists during a period when nothing was known about the structure of the atom or the importance of atomic number. Come, let us start as back as 1817. Dobreiner, a German chemist, proposed a system of classification wherein he classified the then known elements into groups of three called triads based on similarities in their properties and also when they were arranged so the atomic weight of the middle element was either the same or approximately the same as the average of the atomic weights of the other two elements in the 
group of triad. Please go through the table provided. Examples for the triads are iron, cobalt, nickel, lithium, sodium, potassium, calcium, strontium, barium, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Four examples are given. You can see that the atomic weight of the middle element is equal to or almost the same as the average of the other two elements. It is worked out in the last column. Please note that Dobereiner also considered atomic weight as the criteria. But this method did not gain prominence because all the elements could not be classified as is mentioned here. In 1862, a, E, B, Do, Shan, Kothuo proposed a new type of classification. He was a French geologist. He also arranged the elements in the increasing order of their atomic weights just as the previous scientists did. The classification by Do, Shan, Kothuo was in the form of a cylinder where the elements are arranged spirally, hence the name telluric screw or telluric helix. It is something like a cylinder, a thin, narrow, long strip of paper wherein the elements are arranged in the increasing order of atomic weight is wound up to give the shape of a cylinder. It is wound up in such a manner that elements with similar properties come in the same column. Let me make it more clear. Imagine a long, narrow, thin piece of paper which is very, very long. I have shown only a small portion here. And on that paper, the elements are arranged in the increasing order of atomic weight. This paper is wound up in the form of a cylinder, something like what I am showing on the screen. All the elements are arranged or written on that in the increasing order of atomic weight. It is something like a coil. If this coil is slightly opened up and then arranged in two dimension, it will look something like this what is shown in the picture. That is, the different layers in the spiral will look like circles as is shown here. I have marked only the position of a few elements only to make clear how the similar elements come under the same column. You can see here lithium, sodium, calcium, strontium come under the same group starting from the center outward. They are similar elements having more or less similar properties. Elements with the same property fell in the same vertical row drawn from the center of the spiral. So, I have shown this cylindrical pattern and this circular pattern so that you can understand how these vertical rows are drawn. I will not claim that this diagram is very perfect. Okay. Anyway, this method of classification did not gain much attention. So, scientists continue to make new attempts. Newland's Law of Octaves, 1865. In 1865, Newland's classified elements on a different basis. He also considered increasing order of atomic weight. His law is called Newland's Law of Octaves. It states that when elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic weight, properties repeat periodically after the seventh element, just as the musical notes, that is octaves. He used serial numbers from 1 to 7, then arranged the elements in the increasing order of their atomic weights. After fluorine, Sodium is the eighth element. It is similar to lithium. And if you are starting from beryllium, magnesium is the eighth element. Magnesium is similar to beryllium. And if you are starting from boron, it is aluminium which is the eighth element. Aluminium resembles boron. But this method of classification could be applied to elements up to calcium only. So, this method of classification also was insufficient. In 1869, Lothar Mayer came up with an arrangement. He studied 
physical properties like atomic volume, melting point, and boiling point of element. Density is mass per volume. That is mass divided by volume. So, atomic volume is equal to gram atomic weight divided by density of the atom. Using these values, he plotted a graph that is atomic weight versus atomic volume. Atomic weight is taken along the x-axis and atomic volume is taken along the y-axis. The shape of the graph is more or less like this. This graph, as you see, has so many peaks. This portion is the ascending portion. Each section has an ascending portion. And this is the descending portion. I have prepared a graph. And I will discuss that graph after we finish discussing the observations made by Lothar Mayer. What were his observations? Alkali metals which were more electropositive occupied the peaks. And alkaline earth metals which were less electropositive occupied the descending portion of the curve. And the most electronegative elements occupied the ascending portion of the curve. Now, I will show you the graph and then discuss these points further. The graph plotted by Lothar Mayer looks something like this. Atomic volume in cubic centimeter is taken along the y-axis. Gram atomic weight is taken along the x-axis. From the graph, it is clear as atomic weight increases, the atomic volume goes on fluctuating. It increases, then decreases, again increases, decreases and like that it goes. So, there is periodicity of property. Okay. Now, I have not marked the position of all the elements. I have marked only a few. Just enough to clarify the three important observations made by Lothar Mayer. The more electropositive elements shown in bluish green circles like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium and cesium occupy the peaks. The less electropositive elements like beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium and barium shown in yellow circles occupy the descending positions in the graph. These are the descending portions of the graph. Elements like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine which are shown in white circles are the most electronegative elements and they are seen in positions in the ascending part of the graph. Lothar Mayer and Mendeleev worked on classification of elements almost at the same time. But Mendeleev was able to publish his work earlier than Lothar Mayer. So Lothar Mayer's work did not gain much attention. Moreover, Mendeleev's periodic table was easier to follow. We will discuss Mendeleev's periodic table separately in the next video. If you think this video was useful, do like the video, share the video with your friends and also leave your feedbacks as comments in the comment box below. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, do subscribe it now and support me. The subscriptions are totally free. Thank you very much. Bye for the present. Take care.